Hi there, Leanne, Miranda, and John. Thank you, John, everybody. Uh, this is uh, your video lesson for today. Um, if you have any questions at the end, feel free to shoot me a message over, and I'll be happy, more than happy to clarify. Um, so let's go right down the list. So the first thing is uh, our right hand. Um, we're trucking through the book. Um, you guys make an awesome, awesome, uh, awesome headway. Um, so we're getting to the point now where we need to start talking about his uh, ring finger and getting that set up because that does pop up in um, what was the first piece of use of ring finger? Um, you can do a lot of them in the early book, but um, but I think the but the Bakhtans is the first appearance of the uh, of the ring finger um, uh, in the in the series. And what we call the ring finger, we call it A. So just to recap, in case I haven't said it before, um, P is thumb. That's how we notate it on paper. So if I have a note and I specifically want to say, hey, I want to use my thumb for that and remind myself, I'll put a little P right there. I for in, uh, index, middle for uh, medial, uh, M for, for middle, and then NUR or uh, A for the ring fingers from the Spanish terms. So what you'll do is you'll place the thumb on five for the A string. You'll place I and M, just really relax, just touching the, touching the third and the second string respectively. And then you'll place the, the, um, the, uh, the ring finger right on the first string. And think of it very relaxed, just landing all the fingers right there, not squeezing down or anything like that, just right on the tips of the fingers. And then what you'll do is you'll take his ring finger and you're gonna push, you'll push through and land on the, on the second string. And what that'll look like when you do it, it'll be this. Um, my teacher, the great pedagogue Ricardo, uh, um, when he was when he was working up his positional right hand frames, um, the right hand. This is actually what he could have considered like is like kind of like the starting position, right? Everything moves from here. So when you do this, you push the ring finger through, right? Just like that. Just really relaxed. You don't want to uh, dig into the string, right? If you need to draw like a little line on his fingers, if you do, it'll be. Okay, right there on the tip of the finger, so not like on the pad of the finger at all. Right. So you take that and you, you set these guys right here and you push through and a nice rest stroke on the first string. The reason why I put these two on the, on the string is because when I was teaching this before, before I did that, this is what would happen. Like these guys would like fly away or they, they'd tense up and they'd shoot out this way. So I found it was better just to let them rest here because that way if, I did, if they did tense, I would see it right away. They would do like this. Right, so you should be very relaxed, right? Very good. So work on that for me. Uh, next thing is horizontal hand. I want you to add the F sharp to it. Um, so what you do is bring that hand up to the fretboard. Now we're following his wizard lines and you get open D for a uh, second fret E. Remember that fish hook shape right there that I've been harping about. And then that G, right? And then F sharp is the fourth fret right there. So let's see if we can get him this week to do D, E, F sharp, and G. See how I keep them all down right there? So D, E, F sharp, G. Let's not worry about flashcards for those, for those notes right now. Let's just stay with the, the G tonalization. I don't want to confuse them too much. So um, there'll be time for that later on. So practice adding that F sharp there. It's on the fourth, strip, fourth fret, fourth string. So it's this one right here. And then what we'll do next time is we'll start doing pinky push-ups. Um, that is this right here, just give you a preview. You don't need to do, it that, do that this week, but it'll look like this. Which leads into the rigging. So start working on, uh, so we'll, we'll start with that next time. I'll be there for that one. Um, and then next thing I want you guys to work on, continue your note reading flashcards, the rhythms and the, and the, and the, and the note heads. Because <coughs> I think maybe it's after a few weeks of practicing that he'll be ready for uh, read this first. I think you might have even already bought it, um, but it's a great book. I know the author. I can get an autograph for it if you want it. Um, cool. So, so keep working those flashcards and note cards. Hopefully, since you guys are on vacation, maybe you pack those in your in, uh, in your, your carry on, <coughs> and you can practice having him clap the different rhythms. That's helpful too. And then lastly, um, number four, start listening to Rigadoon if you haven't done so already uh, to get that tune in his ear. Like I said, this one's, this is the one that I, if you don't, if the student's not listening to the, the CDs or the, the, the iTunes tracks, um, this is a spot where I find out because this one's a really, it's, it's the longest one I hit so far. Perpetual Motion has a lot of notes to it, but Rigadoon is kind of twisty and turny, especially in the second section. Mm -hmm. So you definitely want to get that tuned down. If you haven't done so, um, maybe even start thinking about like making up lyrics for it. I think that's really good for Lee, and I think that I think you're really responsible to that. So maybe pick something funny, pick something about Star Wars, I guess. I know he's really into Star Wars now. So maybe start making um, 
making up lyrics for the song before we even start like messing with it. And some of my colleagues won't even teach a song to a student until they sing it to them. Um, I'm not that like super hardcore, um, but it, I do think it's helpful that, that in Leanne's case, since this one is so much longer, that, um, that you do want to you, you wanna have them sing it. Awesome. So go ahead and work on that for me. Um, like you said, if you have any questions, feel free to uh, shoot me a message and uh, I'll be more than happy to answer. See you next time.